radar relies on the reception of a reflected pulse. In other words, the echo of the transmitted pulse. Primary radar relies on the reception of a reflected pulse. In other words, the echo of the transmitted pulse. Secondary radar, on the other hand, receives pulses transmitted by the target in response to interrogation pulses. Secondary surveillance radar is one of several types of secondary radar system. Both primary and secondary surveillance radars are used to track the progress of an aircraft. Primary radar provides better bearing and range information of an aircraft than SSR, but its biggest disadvantage is the lack of positive individual aircraft identification. This is required for safe operations by air traffic control, particularly in crowded airspace. Primary radars also require higher transmitter power outputs for the two-way journey of the single pulses. Secondary surveillance radar requires an aircraft to be fitted with a transmitter receiver, called a transponder. The pilot sets a four-figure code allocated by air traffic control, and the transponder transmits information automatically in pulse-coded form when it's interrogated by the ground station. The transmissions are therefore only one way, from transmitter to receiver. The ground station transmits and interrogates on 1,030 MHz and receives on 1,090 MHz. The aircraft receives on 1,030 MHz and transmits and transponds on 1,090 MHz. The SSR ground antenna transmits in a narrow beam, while the aircraft transmits omnidirectionally in a circular pattern around the aircraft. A typical aircraft transponder control unit is shown here. The aircraft is interrogated from the ground station by a predetermined series of pulses on the carrier frequency of 1030 MHz. The aircraft transponder then transmits a coded reply on a carrier frequency of 1090 MHz. There are two main modes of operation. The ON position selects mode alpha which is an interrogation to identify an aircraft. The ALT position selects mode Charlie, which is an interrogation to obtain an automatic height readout of an aircraft. To achieve this, the aircraft must not only have a transponder with mode Charlie, but also a special altimeter which can pass information to the transponder. The IDENT button is used, normally at the request of air traffic control, to facilitate quick identification of the aircraft. When pressed, it produces a distinctive display so that the controller can pick out the aircraft easily from a crowded radar screen. The standby button turns the transponder off but keeps it in standby mode so that it's available instantly when required. The test button is for ground test use. The controller will tell the aircraft both the mode and code to set. In this example, the aircraft has set a code of 4635 and mode alpha. And in this example, the aircraft has kept the same code, but changed to mode Charlie. By international agreement, some codes are reserved for special purposes and should be selected as follows. 7700 indicates an emergency condition. This code should be selected as soon as is practicable after declaring an emergency situation. However, if the aircraft is already transmitting a discrete code and also receiving an air traffic service, that code may be retained at the discretion of either the pilot or controller. 7600 indicates a radio failure. 7500 indicates unlawful interference with the planned operation of the flight, in other words, a hijack. 2000 
provides recognition of an aircraft which has not received any instructions from air traffic control units to operate the transponder. For example, when entering the United Kingdom airspace from an adjacent region where the operation of transponders has not been required. Mode Charlie should be operated with all of the above codes. This shows a typical radar display of aircraft in the London terminal area. SSR has the following advantages over primary radar. It requires much less transmitting power to provide coverage up to 200 to 250 nautical miles. It's not dependent on an aircraft's echoing area or aspect relative to the radar transmitter. It gives clutter-free responses as it doesn't rely on returning reflected pulses. It positively identifies an aircraft's primary response by displaying its code and call sign alongside. It indicates an aircraft's track history, speed, altitude and destination. It can indicate on a controller's screen that an aircraft has an emergency, has lost radio communications, or is being hijacked. Thus, when SSR is used in conjunction with primary radar, the advantages of both systems are realised. SSR has the following disadvantages. Garbling is caused by overlapping replies from two or more transponders on nearly the same bearing from the ground station and within a distance of 1.7 nautical miles from each other, measured on a line from the antenna. Fruiting is interference at one interrogator caused by replies from a transponder responding to interrogations from another. There are only 4,096 identification codes available in mode alpha. Ghost targets which are due to reflections from obstacles or high terrain. Shielding occurs when the aircraft attitude shields the antenna, resulting in loss of signals.